What's up everybody? So you want a DPS as a priest in Season of Discovery? Let's talk about it and see what you can do to maximize your damage and hopefully try to compete with everybody else on the meters. If you saw my last priest video then you'll know that I wasn't too high on priest DPS, but that was before they got buffed. While these buffs are nice, priests are still at the bottom of the DPS barrel, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to enjoy it anyway. First off, let's talk about hit rating. So in BFD, boss enemies are two levels above your character, which means you need 5% hit in order to be hit capped. You'll always have 1% chance to miss, so 5% hit is the best that we can do with our gear. Now you're going to get 3% of hit from the world buff boon Black Fathom, and 2% hit from the Black Fathom mana oil, which means you don't actually need any hit from gear or talents in order to be hit capped in the raid. So I'll show you talent setups that do and do not utilize hit talents just depending on what your setup is. Now before we get into the talent setups, let's talk about the new runes in Season of Discovery. Twist of Faith is a nice single target boost to Mind Flight and Mind Blast, assuming you have Shadow Word Pain on your target. Void Plague is a strong Plague Dot, a damage over time ability that has a 6 second cooldown on its cast. Homunculi is another new ability that was also buffed recently. This summons three little shadow dudes that sometimes attack your target. Or sometimes they do nothing, and other times they attack whatever they want to. They can be unpredictable, but they do provide very strong debuffs when they do actually attack your target. Now, these guys are a little bit unreliable, but when they actually do what they're supposed to, they are a great benefit to you and your raid. Mindseer is a nice AoE ability that functions the same as Wrath Mindseer. It does not hurt the enemy you cast on, but hits all enemies in a 5 yard radius. Shared Pain is okay, as a Shadow Word Pain is a pretty weak spell overall, so this rune is not particularly strong right now. It can be decent when paired with Mindseer for some big AoE pulls, but I just think Shadow Word Pain costs too much mana and deals too little damage, so if you're going to AoE, you should probably just stick with Mindseer. Shadow Word Death is a new but familiar ability as well. It deals damage and returns that damage back to you if you do not kill your target with the ability. It has a 12 second cooldown and since it does a little bit more damage than Mind Blast at 25, it's not particularly great but can be decent while leveling. And finally, we have Penance. You might be thinking, but that's a healing spell, and you're not wrong. Unfortunately though, this is also one of our best DPS abilities, especially for its mana cost. It's great while leveling, and though it doesn't scale that well as you level up, it's still really good at level 25, and you're going to want to cast it on cooldown, believe it or not. Alright, now let's talk about Shadow DPS. So the talents that I like for Shadow DPS are on the screen, and this is the setup that I recommend. None of these points are particularly great, but in the first row we have Blackout, which is primarily a PvP talent and nice for some open world content. You could absolutely put these points into Spirit Tap instead, but it doesn't really matter since you're not really going to be getting uh, killing blows on enemies anyway. Next up we have Shadow Focus for hit, though as I mentioned it's not needed for raids but does help out in the open world and for PvP. Improved Shadow Word Pain is nice for our DPS and our mana since it makes Shadow Word Pain last 6 seconds longer. Shadow Affinity reduces threat, and Improved Mind Blast reduces the cooldown of Mind Blast. And then we have Mind Flay and 1 point in Shadow Weaving. Now the runes that I recommend on single target, which is pretty much every fight in Black Fathom Deeps, are Void Plague, Penance, and Homunculi. Now one thing to note is that the first boss, Baron Aquanus, is immune to plagues, which Void Plague is a plague, so you'll have to use Twist of Faith on him instead. Now the rotation looks like this. You're going to cast Void Plague into Shadow Word Pain if the enemy will live for its duration, into Penance, into Mind Blast, and then into Mind Flay or Wanding. Now let's talk about Mind Flay versus Wanding because it's a little bit weird. I'm unsure if Mind Flay is higher DPS than Wanding. I think it might be, but if you have the mana to use it as a filler, then you should. This is because it can help maintain Shadow Weaving stacks. And since we only have a 20% chance to apply it with every shadow cast currently at level 25, this will increase your damage if you do manage to hit that 20%. The highest DPS wand out of Black Fathom Deeps is also shadow damage, so it's going to buff that damage as well. So assuming mana is not going to be an issue, then you definitely want to be mind flaying, and if it is going to be an issue, then you just wand and let your mana regen that way instead. Now what are the pros of playing Shadow? Well, it's going to be really good in PvP, so if you go this spec you'll have fun in Ashen Vale and Battlegrounds without needing to respec. It can be mana hungry and does require some skill to get right, um, especially when it comes to managing your mana, 
But I have to say, I enjoyed in PvP and I enjoyed in PvE a lot. And if you're a Priest DPS enjoyer, I think you'll enjoy it as well. Alright, now this is a little bit new to me, but let's talk about Holy DPS. Now I'm going to be honest, I've never played Holy DPS, but I do think there is a spec here. Smite and Holy Fire are not that bad, at least compared to our Shadow Spells at level 25. I think the main issue here is going to be a lack of hit talents, but that doesn't really matter for BFD with the world buff and the mana oil. Now here are the talents that I recommend, and there are two options. We absolutely care about Holy Specialization and Divine Fury in the Holy Tree, but after that it depends on what we want to do. We can go further down into the Holy Tree where we're basically spending another 5 points in order just to get 5% more damage to Smite and Holy Fire. Or we can go into the Disc Tree and get 25% more Wand damage. This will depend on your playstyle and how fast your kills are, as faster kills where you don't run out of mana, you'll definitely want that 5% damage to Smite and Holy Fire, but for slower kills where mana is going to be an issue, you're definitely going to want Wand Specialization. Now let's talk about runes as Holy. Funny enough, we're going to take the same exact runes that we did as Shadow, so that's going to be Void Plague, Penance, and Homunculi. There's no better option since all the other runes are just for healing anyway. Now what's the rotation? It's going to be Void Plague into Holy Fire if the dot isn't applied, Penance into Mind Blast into Smite, and then Wanding if you don't have the mana to Smite. Now what are the pros of playing Holy? Honestly, I'm not really sure. I don't know how the damage will be, and I don't know how the mana will be. I have heard people saying good things about this spec, it's just not something that I've personally done, and so I want to present it to you as something that is an option, but I just can't comment on how good it's actually going to be. But if you're somebody who loves Smite Priest and really wants to be a holy damage dealer, then this is the spec for you. Now what are the cons? Well, I think the main one is that it's really bad in PvP. You don't have blackout for stuns, you don't have mind flight slow, you don't have increased hit chance from talents so in the open world you're going to suffer, and you're not going to be any better at healing with the talents that you've taken. But if you want to play this, then go for it. I think Sod is a playground for everybody to do whatever they want, and that's why I'm presenting this option to you because I do think it's viable. I think it's just as viable as bringing a Shadow Priest which isn't particularly strong either. So if this is something that you want to try then go for it and definitely let me know how it goes. I'm actually excited to see what it's like to play this spec. Anyway, that's all for this video and I hope it's been helpful in learning about Priest in Season of Discovery. Anyway, my name is Pantsface and I'll see you in the next one.